For the next few minutes, we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence or AI and addressing some of your biggest concerns about your kids. The quickly improving technology is now posing all new challenges for parents and schools. Will this technology, which is so powerful, simply do the work for our students? Will it make them lazy or even kill their curiosity? Joe Dana has been talking to education experts, and Joe, it's probably understandable why for many our first instinct might be to worry. Uh, you know what, for good reasons, uh, including the opportunity it poses for students to take shortcuts, cheat. We'll have more on that in a moment. If you haven't heard lately, AI is being compared to world-changing breakthroughs like the PC and the Internet. Arizona schools must adapt. AI finds patterns in massive amounts of data online and performs tasks the way a human might, often within just seconds. As we recently demonstrated, the most popular AI tool, JetGPT, responds to specific requests on demand. Want five paragraphs on a specific topic in the voice of an eighth grader? There you go. Now, it's not perfect, it's not always right, but it's improving rapidly. AI tools don't just produce written content, they churn out images and videos, poetry, uh, all to an astounding level of detail. I recently spoke with three education experts in Arizona about what we can expect this coming school year. They're the Dean of Instruction at Chandler Gilbert Community College, the founder of Vista College Prep Elementary, overseeing the rollout of an AI tutoring platform. And I talked with the ASU Director of Writing Programs, who oversees 150 faculty and 23,000 students at ASU. They are all optimistic and say it's time for parents and educators to embrace the AI revolution. I've had actually more conversations about ChatGPT than, than just about anything lately. Yeah. One of the things that I would emphasize as we look to the future is to invest time in understanding how that technology actually works to develop that core literacy. It's like everything else. We have to embrace it and how we're going to use it to the humankind benefit. It's like Chandler Gilbert and Maricopa, we did collaborate with Intel and we launched the, the first AI program in the country, associate degree. I see such opportunity and power in this. Just like any new curriculum that we roll out, it is incumbent upon us as administrators to provide the training, provide the support. School's already starting again. It sounds like it's up to individual districts and schools to just try to get their teachers up to date. I do think that there are groups that are trying to be as proactive as possible so that we're not in that reactive bucket. We have to remember that ChatGPT kind of launched in November and we a number of educators spent most of their spring and a lot of their summer trying to figure out what does the landscape look like for the coming school year. This changes things. I mean, you can just literally ask questions and different engines will spit out summaries. How are these models impacting the writing process? There are certainly tools that create large content generation, but there are other kinds of large language models that actually walk alongside students as they're uh, engaging in the writing process which I think is a really wonderful thing for students when they're sitting in the middle of their dorm room, it's late at night, they have to get a paper done, and they need real-time feedback. For parents of elementary age kids, how is AI already changing classrooms? I think that there is so much opportunity as we think about specifically the personalization of learning. If we have a class where we're doing some high dosage tutoring, for example, a teacher is working one-on-one -on -one with a group of three to four students. There's another group of students using an avatar. The student is actually reading into the computer. The avatar is actually pausing the student coaching them on their reading. And so we're getting just an extra kind of bang for our buck as we think about how that student is, is getting the additional supports. We heard a, a parent say, I'm worried about whether my kids will still be curious. I think it's like piggyback on that is more like a treasure box. So for kids, it's very interesting and discovering that I can do this, like the gaming world. I can play, I can find, it's like a mining game. The curiosity should be enhanced in part because we're paying attention not just to what it can say and what it can produce, but also how it produces that particular kind of work. The one thing that I think we're all certain of here is that this technology is going to evolve rapidly and the kinds of conversations that we're having now are going to probably be outdated in about two to three months. <laughs> two to three months? Yes. Probably so. That's so probably fast. two to three this weeks. All happening. <laughs> now, you heard ASU's Kyle Jensen there mention a kind of AI writing tutor that can guide students through the next essay or research paper. We tried this out. This program is called Word Tune. I, I, I imagined I was writing about one of my favorite topics, client science. I, I opened with a sentence attributed to NASA. Word Tune gave me several variations of the same sentence. I could compare what I wrote to its suggestions. It also offered me the option to get supporting evidence for that sentence. 
as if it's doing the research for me. However, those suggestions did not come with citations, so I needed to do my own research to find facts that supported the info. Uh, this kind of technology likely means it's all the more important students show sources and demonstrate attribution. I could definitely, though, imagine using this to assist me if I were to write an entire research paper. WordTune, just one of dozens of AI tools out there. And then there's the elephant in the room. How do educators prevent AI-assisted cheating? I think there's always going to be a concern. The response to cheating is not, we need to police it. The response is, we need to learn more about the technology. We need to educate our way around it. We need to trust our teachers to establish really nice boundaries, teach the students how to source uh, the content, for example. In Maricopa and Chandigilba, we have those discussions from the past couple of years. How are we going to do policies in terms of um, making sure the academic integrity is followed? It's important for educators to educate the ethics and develop the policies. Ethics, ethics, ethics. So crucial that teachers and parents make this an ongoing discussion. You know, educators also have at their disposal AI detection tools. Uh, one is called Turn It In. It acts as a screener that looks for chat GPT rhetoric and phrases that could have been lifted from other websites. Oh, okay, this is like a new frontier here. It's so fascinating. Yeah. Um, so what else did the elementary school principal say about parents and just how they can get involved and, and what they should be doing on their end? Two things. One, if your school's not talking about it right now, mm -hmm. find out why. Ask your principal, teachers. Some schools are holding uh, chat GPT tutorials for families. Mm -hmm. And so make sure that your school is up on this and talking about it, even elementary schools. Many classes, though, are saying this is not allowed in the classroom right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Second, if you're a parent, uh, get familiar with this. Play with it. Learn about ChatGPT, how it works. That'll help you so much in understanding what your student will be learning and how it can be abused and how it can also be an opportunity. I, I have to confess, I wish this was around when I was in school. <laughs> 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 what about the Department of Education? What are they telling schools? Uh, Superintendent Tom Horn's office tells us today that they've told schools to be very cautious with this and to, to show vigilance, especially for educators. You know, this stuff can help you create curriculums, mm -hmm. but it can also provide false information. It's not a perfect system. Uh, they're also directing schools to the U.S. Department of Ed, which has its own guidelines for schools on how to handle all this. We'll have that in our story on 12news.com. You can also hear more from our experts at 12news.com this evening. All Just right. touch his arm, make sure. I know, are real. you real? I am real, I promise. <laughs> As far Not as I know. chat GPT, okay. You never know. Joe GPT. A deep fake, a deep fake Joe. Yeah. Joe, thanks.